Yo, 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 what's going on everybody? This video, what are we gonna be talking about? We're gonna be talking about variable scope, at least the basics of it, just to get everybody on the same page as we start getting into more complex applications. So before we get started, please check out our sponsor. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. All right, so here is a situation where we are getting a, a naming conflict, essentially, because we declare this I variable up here, and then down here, we declare again. And the reason we're getting this error here is because the other one is still in scope. So C Sharp is not going to let us create it. So what is the solution to this? Well, instead of declaring I again, we could just give it the value nine. So we can reassign it the value nine by getting rid of the data type prefix. So that's how you assign a value to a variable without declaring it. Or we could use a different variable name. That's totally up to you how you wanna fix it. But in this situation, I actually don't even need this for loop at all, so I'm just gonna delete it. <laughs> you know, when it doesn't work, just delete it. That's what I do. All right, so when we create a variable, it's scoped to the curly braces it's defined in. So if we created a method down here, we could use the i variable. This i is only scoped to this block right here. So outside of that block, i is going to be allowed to be used. So if we create a variable inside of a block, such as k here, we're declaring, we're not going to be able to use that variable outside of the curly braces it's defined in. So in this situation, we can't use k here. If we do a right line and try to print k, it says the name k does not exist in the current context. So because we're outside of that scope that k is defined in, we could redeclare k. And this time it's going to be a different k. The whole concept of variable scope is probably gonna come up again when we get into methods because variables created inside of methods are not going to be the same variables created outside of the method call. So what that means is this write method, for example, it might have a variable inside called k and we're not overriding that value or anything like that. But we'll get into that in detail when we talk about methods once we get into object-oriented programming in this series. Now another thing is global variables. All programming languages have some concept of a global variable or something very similar. So for example, in C Sharp, inside of the class, we can create a class variable. We can say int x and give it the value five. You'll see class variables when we're creating our own custom classes. You may also hear fields, very similar to properties, but we're getting into the, the naming stuff, so we're not gonna worry about it. Essentially, this variable is more likely to cause naming issues than a variable scoped to a, a, a tighter curly brace <laughs> or a tighter block. So only create variables where you absolutely need them. If you need this variable throughout the entire class, that's totally fine. Go ahead and put it there. But just be aware that it increases the chance for naming conflicts. To see what I mean with these class variables, we can go down here past the static void main method. Uh, so right here and paste this method I, I wrote earlier. Hovering over it, it says local variable x hides field x. So you can see how we're more likely to come into issues when we put our variables in a very large scope. So that's all I got for you guys on the basics of scoping. We're gonna get into that more as we get into OOP. I'm pretty stoked, so be sure to subscribe because we're gonna be getting into that pretty soon. We're just gonna take a little break to talk about collections, a couple other things, and then boom, we'll be at object-oriented programming. We'll be here sooner than you know. So be sure to subscribe and I'll see you soon.